on. <laughs> it just gives you an extra surge, which makes your heart flutter. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Welcome to the car guys. This week we're revisiting this incredible McLaren 675 LT. We've had the car in the collection for the last two years but we thought we'd do an update on it now that it is still the best McLaren you can buy. And thanks to the miracle of depreciation they're more affordable than ever. So the 675LT is a tribute to the 1997 McLaren F1s that they ran at Le Mans, you know, the GTR long tail versions? Yeah, I remember those very well. So this is very much a homage to those cars. So this is based on the 650S, Yep. Uh, but this car's 100 kilograms lighter, got 25 more horsepower, and the steering's 10% faster. Front track is actually 20 mils wider as well. Also, the scoops on the side of the car, the air scoops are a bit wider, but, it, but you have to say, you look at a 650, you look at this there's just something so much more right about the 675 you know those little changes all add up to making it a far more aggressive purposeful yeah, angry machine angry machine this Go car's on. in chicane gray which is the launch color of this model and one of the special colors specifically for the 675 lt you also could have silica white napier green delta red and of course mclaren orange lovely little detail in the headlight here this is 675 lt picked out the mclaren swoop as the feature of the headlight with satin carbon fiber and this car's covered in satin carbon and against the chicane gray it's just beautiful I and mean, it's so subtle obviously big splitter on the front of this car extra fins on the side help with the downforce around at the rear of the car we've got this sort of uh, perspexy holy engine cover so it's open to the elements at all times to help cooling then down here under these grills you can actually see the titanium exhaust pipes emerging from the engine if you've been trying particularly hard with your 675 lt these will go a beautiful deep purpley bluey color proper nasa looking device it totally finishes off the car and it shows you whether the owner has actually been on it or not 0 to 16 2.9 seconds at the time it felt like the fastest car that had ever been made it's a 3.8 litre v8 twin turbo peak torque is 516 pound feet which is 700 newton meters whatever they are what i particularly like as well the way it's got 666 brake horsepower the number of the beast but it's 675 PS, so that's where the name comes from from the ps from the ps because really it should Wait, be is ps is it like bs yeah, pretty much. It will top out about 205 miles an hour, just over 200. McLaren quote a 1230 kilogram dry weight, which when you add in all the fluids and stuff, comes to about 1328, but that's still pretty light, actually. 1300 is nothing, is it? Given the size of it. Wheels, 19s on the front. 20s on the back and then look at those monster brakes sat in there on the front we've got six piston 394 millimeter that's just mental isn't it yeah i mean that's big and then on the back 380 millimeters that's crazy and four pistons so i mean stopping power is definitely not an issue a lot of the 675 lts are specced with mclaren orange on the calipers but i think that the green uh, is it, not only is it very rare, but I think it really sets it off. Massive wing. This uh, deploys at speed and you can change its angle of attack depending on the mode that you're in. And of course, when you stomp on the brakes, this whole piece becomes an air brake. As with all McLarens, this features an entire carbon tub as its core. Yeah, yeah. And it's a safety cell like no other. This is an example where Formula One tech has translated directly into the road car. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of space here at the front so you could get a few bags and stuff in here easily this entire section is matte carbon a seamless blend here from the diffuser all the way up to the top back rear of the car flanked by these two fist size exhaust pipes look at that so Jason, would you like to know how McLaren has deemed it suitable to open the engine cover on this car? Yes, yes, please, please tell. Because of course McLaren, they're not the sort of people that would just give you anything as obvious as a button in the car that you would use. No, in order to access the engine compartment for anything, you have to use this tool which is located in the uh, in the boot in the front. Well, you say that, you say it's located in the boot at the front. It is for the first time you go to use it. And then after that, it's somewhere in the garage that you have no idea. This is a shaft of carbon fiber with a bespoke handle and bespoke screw Machined. head. You see on both both sides of here, yep. we've got a, a screw. So you, you insert it in there and you turn it 
and that opens like that and, and then, then this one goes it. here over there so how do you do thing. this with one set of hands uh, there we go right and okay. then you lift it up and then Brilliant. there's a another carbon shaft there and that is located oh okay so two piece goes, goes in there and then you lower it down very much like the uh f40, f40. quite a palaver to get in there a bit of drama and then once you get in there can't really see anything anyway yeah i mean it's very beautiful in space age this is how i imagine a buck rogers starfighter to look getting in here is not particularly easy just underneath the door here you've got these horrible rubbery bung things which are very imprecise and not very nice at all but you push that that then allows you to open up these fantastic doors look at that to get in the car with any degree of uh, dignity you have to have, make sure that the seat is always pulled all the way back because otherwise there's no way to get in and you put your legs in like this bum down other leg in boom the seals are very very wide you sit very low in the car these seats are sculpted so you're sitting in a kind of racing driver position <laughs> there's a hole in the middle of this seat for harnesses so do not, as I have done in the past, put your phone between your legs because it will disappear through that hole and you'll never get it back. So what they've given you is a handy flap at the front of the seat to slide your valuables in. From the driver's point of view, you've got this beautiful unadorned carbon fibre steering wheel with Alcantara all around it. Alcantara everywhere. It all feels like a super quality item. Very important, of course, is the manual door release uh, pull here which you uh, use if the doors fail right here in the center console we've got the toggle switches for the handling modes and the power mode so you switch between normal sport and track for your powertrain to give you uh, different L levels of savagery and the same thing for the handling you've got normal sport and track which is used for the comfort suspension levels so you can have it like a limo or like a track monster the whole panel is activated when you press this active button that also gives you the controls to go full manual gear changes rather than auto which is the default and you can also turn off all the traction control you've got the launch button which is obviously completely terrifying but it's the way to get 2.9 seconds 0 to 60 and you've got an aero button which allows you to flip up the wing to its maximum level of attack all the time. In the center here we've got the somewhat controversial handbrake. The reason why it's controversial is because once it's on it won't come off automatically so the number of times you go to set off and you just get this annoying bonging sound which says oh you've forgotten the handbrake and then of course you never remember whether you push it forward or flick it back to turn it on or off and I promise you 100% of the time you'll do the opposite of what you need. There we go. It really does feel fighter jet like once you sit in this thing, doesn't it? I mean, it just feels purposeful. We're not even going anywhere yet. Yeah, there's nothing else that feels like a sort of space age F-15. And this is the era when Ferrari started putting lots of buttons on the steering wheels and McLaren went, yeah, we're not doing that. Steering <laughs> wheels are for turning. I'm about to introduce you to the absolute mind-numbing hell of the uh, lifting front lift system oh, yes, yes, on yes. this. Other cars, you press a button and it goes up and down, hopefully quite quickly. Yeah. In this, no, no, that's no. way too easy for McLaren. See this little lever down here? Yes. So you, you push that forward and it brings right. up a little display here. Okay. And uh, with lots of incomprehensible symbols. One of them is a car with arrows up and down. You yep. then you then push that. No, no, you don't push that. You, you pull that All and right. now you then push the stalk up to make the car go up. And, oh, in, a, and in approximately nine months, the car will have achieved maximum height. And you can hear it yep. pumping air into the suspension or something into the suspension to, yep. to make it go higher. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still, still going. And there we go. Imagine doing that in front of a speed bump that with traffic behind that you. You've just encountered because you're on a route you don't know. Exactly. I mean, that would Absolute be absolute nightmare. If I go, I think more than say 30, 30, 40 miles an hour, it will automatically go down. So right. maybe, let's try that. So here we go. Thirty. Thirty. Nothing. Thirty-five. Nothing. 40. 40. So at 40 miles an hour, it will then automatically go down. How long does a GT Touring take? <laughs> so we're going to put it in manual only mode because I cannot stand 
auto modes where they hunt up through the gears and they go up to seventh when you're doing 30 miles an hour. So it's been a while since you've been in this car. What's your immediate impressions again now you're back in? Yeah, I love it. I is love that it. Is I love that it? it? I yeah, love it. it. This really is like a scalpel when it comes to driving around twisty roads. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people wonder why we've got this car and it's because it offers something different. It's, it's like no other car. It's like no other car. So we're in second, we're pulling about two and a half thousand revs. Yep. And off we go. Here comes the turbo. There comes the turbo. Oh my good God. Oh. Air brake deployed, air brake deployed. Loving that. It's got that old school wait for the turbos stuff going on in it. Yeah. Just. Which I quite like. Oh, well, yeah, obviously, because it's proper. And when you light up the turbos like we just did there, I mean, just the absolute surge of power that you get, it goes from being this incredible, nimble little fighter jet, and then you floor it, and it's just got all the torque and power of a, yeah, exactly, an afterburner feels like a, a modern iteration of an F40. It's got that similar kind of race car with huge turbocharged torque and power behind it. Of all the cars in McLaren's range, and I include the P1, this to me feels like it's got proper soul. There's just something about it that will always, always be special. But as good as that speed is, it is nothing compared to how good this car is through flowing corners and change, oh, yeah. change of direction. And, and, and the usability of that speed and power as well. When I first drove it, there was a, I know it's not four wheel drive, but there is definitely that planted feeling because of all the aero working in your favor, yeah. that big deep splitter at the front and the side vents and the little winglers. It just feels so, so good. And that's why you can change direction mid-corner. You go, oh no, I need to sneak another three millimeters off of that yep. line. I'm just going to take a tad off. Mm. And it just goes, all right, then we're just going to do that. Yeah. You do feel like there's a lot of car behind you, though. Yeah, no doubt, no you doubt. You feel very much like you're sitting right at the very front on, front, on the top of the front wheels, and you've got this big, long thing behind you. But that gives you quite a lot of stability so therefore it gives you a lot of confidence. I think those titanium exhausts also give it a very, very unique sound. Yes. A lot of McLarens do sound a bit hoovery, a bit vacuum cleanery, and they're quite dull, but for some reason this... Perhaps it's the crossover of the titanium exhausts, but it's just a much rawer, more menacing noise. See, now we've got some pace on the car, those kind of bumps and uneven surfaces just disappear. Yeah, and as good as it is on the road, it's phenomenal on the track. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous on the track. Engage that full downforce mode and the wing came up and it just sucked down onto the ground and yeah. it was literally like a sort of slot car racer. It was like a Scalectrix Brilliant. just shooting round Goodwood properly full on speed and the grip was just astounding. It was and actually the thing that was stopping the car from going any quicker were the tyres. Yeah. In the end, it got to a point where you were like, I, I really would not, I'd like to run some slicks on this to see what it actually could do. Did you know that the man that designed this car also designed the big wing on the Ford Escort RS Cosworth? I mean, that's just mental, isn't it? It's crazy. Who knew that? Who knew that? This car was designed by Frank Stevenson. Frank also created the Maserati MC12. He also did the Mini. He did the Mini, though. He created the remodeled Mini. And this has got to be one of the ones that he sits back and goes, yeah, I earned my money that yeah. day. Many people think that the number plate on this car is a fake trade platey thing. Well, but, well, it's obvious why they think that. Well, because it's so perfect. What I don't get is how no one who already owned one of these didn't get that plate. I don't think anyone is stupid enough 
to pay a load of money for a plate that only goes on one car. The dials as well, look, they're just so classy. It's just so yeah. nice and simple. They've done a great job with the fonts uh -huh. in this car. Quick word on the Iris entertainment -y thing system. Oh yeah, Iris, not sure what that stands for. No idea, the manual doesn't really tell you either. I'm sure one of you guys will be able to tell us what Iris stands for. Yeah, or I'll put it as a caption down here. Yeah. That'll be the way to do caption. it. Iris is the touchscreen system which you can use to control the media, the heating, the radio, the phone, and it's got uh, voice control and you can also upload new apps. Famously, when McLaren launched the 12C, it didn't really work properly. No. Uh, no it's required it many, you. many, many updates it needs. I actually really like it. I like the fact it's very simple vector graphics. I like the whole black and white feel to it as well. I think that's really cool. But there are a few little issues that you get with it. For example, when you're doing the fan temperature air conditioning, yeah. it is exceptionally easy to accidentally touch a different part of the screen by one little micron and for it to turn to full roasting temperature instantly. Also, you can be driving along and you've got beautiful air conditioning coming out the car and all of a sudden it will stop and start to heat up and the iris will say, rebooting the aircon system. <laughs> right, okay. You can be driving along and listening to the radio and all of a sudden it stops and it says, tuner not found. Tuner not found? And that's it. Sod your radio, you've got no entertainment for the rest of your journey. <laughs> these cars have depreciated quite heavily in the last year. Yeah. Reasons for depreciation, we think, you've got the McLaren brand not yet fully established, yeah. you've got the fact that they release so many new damn cars which are better and better and better, they eclipse the performance of this. Yeah. They've had some fires with Senna's and some various other cars which might yeah. be people off. The poor quality of the dealer network is also an yeah. issue. Reliability issues which a lot of people have been very vocal about. Yeah. Obviously in a lot of forums you're never vocal about when things are going well, it's only when it goes badly. And all those things really have combined to suddenly hit this car massively this year to the tune of a, a, a hundred thousand quid if you're an owner and you bought one of these from new or near to new then you're a bit screwed you're probably feeling a little bit sore right now but if you're in the market for one of the greatest supercars that's ever been made yeah. forget just mclaren's the great one of the greatest supercars full stop this is an absolute bargain now. In terms of getting one of these for say 200,000 quid, that's, that's ludicrous value. That is so cheap. So here you are, back reacquainted with the 675. Right, let's have some little bit of beanage. <laughs> Just so the steering is perfect. Oh, oh. See, it just just when you think you've got a handle on it, <laughs> it just gives you an extra surge, which makes your heart flutter. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. I forgot how terrifying it was. It's got a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, which is superb. Which is superb. And actually, when you're booting around like this, it's super smooth. When you're on it, it gives you that lovely kick. Yeah, yeah. As you're driving right now, I cannot change, I cannot tell you're making any gear changes. No, other than the... Slight noise change. Yeah. Oh, oh Christ almighty. She's still got it. It's the ferociousness of those turbos. Just come in and just... Yeah. I love the... Um, the firmness of the pedal as well on the accelerator yeah. means you can modulate it, it doesn't bounce around like the Ferrari. But I remember the one thing that I don't like about this car, how close the brake pedal is. Oh really? That never really bothers me. Actually. Don't you? I'm never quite sure if I'm pushing the brake or, you know, what I'm going for. Beanage. Beanage. even redlined. I mean that was that was about seven and a half thousand RPM. 
<laughs> before you chicken down. Before I, yeah, before I bottled it. Oh. Before I basically went, I and I bottled it. I bottled it. I jammed my head against the headrest, <laughs> and that helped. Did it? Yeah. Brakes. Yes, they're good. That's proper braking as well, isn't it? There was not one moment there where we didn't think that we would stop exactly no. where you wanted it to. No, not one. It's lovely and talky as well. I mean, that's the other great thing about it. That's what allows you to, whoa, dump a truck. Dump a truck. That's what allows you to flow, is the torque. You don't have to wring its neck. Yeah. I mean, it's great fun to wring its neck, obviously. So we, what we don't like about this car is the lift system is this system archaic. Is awful. Iris is a bit temperamental. Yeah. The brake pedal to throttle transition feels a little bit not perfect. But that's it. But that is literally it. That's it. Niggle, 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 really. We like every, everything. We, we, like, like, we like everything. So we're talking about steering, the grip levels, the power, the quality of the cabin, the way yeah. that it feels like a fighter jet, yeah. how darty it is, the gear change, the suspension. Just I everything. mean, you've just listed the whole car. It's just everything. We are in right now one of the all-time great cars yeah. that should already be an iconic status, but for whatever reason is now a bit of a bargain and is now a little bit unloved. So if you've got one of these, do not get rid of it. Ever. And if you don't have one of these yet, now is the time to get one. Go and get one. Yeah, before the prices go back up. Because they will. Hopefully they will. So we've taken this car out, we've given it a damn good thrashing. What Some of the beanage. Exactly, what do you think? Oh my God, this car's so good. So, so good. Everything about it, from a driving perspective, is perfect. It still has it. It still has it. In spades. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you cannot get a better driving car for the money. This car's built as a driving machine. It's there to conquer tracks. It's there to give you the thrill of a lifetime on a twisty B road. It's definitely worth revisiting this car, wasn't it? Because oh, I'm so pleased we did this car. Yeah. So pleased. So our advice would be... Buy one immediately. Buy one immediately. Thanks for watching this episode, guys, and this full review of the McLaren 675LT. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments because we read them all. Ding that notification bell for when we've got another video uploaded, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.